<laughs> Wait a minute, hurry up and start. Come on. <laughs> Stop, boo. Just giving you a nice rub. All right. Come on. Okay. Stop. Sorry. Get your hands from behind my head. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> What's up, family? Welcome to Ask the Mop. <laughs> oh, it's late. I'm tired. What's up, family? Welcome Don't to. Don't start over. What's up, family? Welcome to Ask the Mods. Where we challenge you to stop playing and start pushing. I mean, that right there is real. It's just me. It's just in me. Oh my God, it's bigger than him. He's dank. Play your breath in my face. Let's see if you want three for three. <laughs> this is my goofy wife, Iana. <laughs> goofy, man. And this is my lovely husband, Ayise. Welcome, y'all. Welcome <laughs> to Ask the Maats. We got a question in. Like the head? Here you go. Yeah, um, I'm going to let my wife read the question. It's probably about like, right. it's 12.30 in the morning right now. My wife, she got jokes. How are you just going to put so, it on uh, me? You have the computer ahead. in your lap. Yeah, man, go ahead, take the, go ahead and take the computer. Okay, got you. All right, y'all. Uh, this is what the young lady has said. It's a um, woman who has written in. She says, I'm going to try and sum this up because it's long. My husband and I have been together for 10 years, but married for three of those years. After my sister died in 2006, my relationship with God grew tremendously. Good stuff. The closer I got to God, the further my husband and I got. I don't beat him over the head with the Bible at all. She has at all in caps. I do what God is calling me to do while checking my own issues, attitudes, and behaviors. I figured that my husband would catch up when God allowed. God has to change him, not me. What I've noticed is that my husband seems to resent me because of my relationship with God. He calls me a holy roller and says I'm putting up a front to everyone else. I recognize what's happening and I try hard, I try hard to avoid conflict with him. However, sometimes I slip and engage in it. He picks arguments with me constantly, but they don't get big because most of the time I don't play into them. She says that sometimes they can go for two weeks without speaking because of these arguments. She says he's wow. picking with her all the time, but she makes excuses for his behavior and that he's been this way since she met him. She says it's not just towards her, but to most of the people he comes into contact with. And a lot of people complain about how mean he is. Let me stop you right there. If he's been that way since you met him, why did you marry him? Okay, dude, we're not finished with the question. All right, go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, she goes on to say that this strain on their marriage has caused a lack of sexual intimacy. Um, she basically says that they were supposed to do some marriage counseling and workshops and other things, but he never follows through. She's purchased books, but he reads one chapter and puts it down. Um, she also says that she, let's see, I saw something, I saw something. It's a long letter, y'all. Um, she says that there have been some telltale signs that there may be something going on in terms of cheating, but she doesn't dare accuse because she has no real proof. Mm -hmm. um, she just she puts on sexy lingerie and that kind of thing to try to entice him in the bedroom and he doesn't make a move so she says what am I to do he now wants to move on she says our lease is up in a few months and I will not be able to keep up this home I'm real tired of trying I want out and feel I will go right now and file for separation um, she said, if he leaves me, I don't know what to say to others, especially since most married women come to me about keeping their marriage intact. I say exactly what the Bible says and explain that marriage requires work. Um, but she says, but yet my own husband won't put in any work. I'm seriously at a loss. Um, so she, she talks about some other things, but essentially this, these are the issues um, she, she's, she's dealing with. And she wants to know how to deal with this thing. Well, she says that he says that she's selfish. Mm -hmm. She and, says she hears this whenever she has to do school papers to study. He says she's selfish. Um, he says that she's controlling. She hears, th uh, hears this whenever she says that they have to pay a bill um, or they shouldn't spend money frivolously. 
Mm -hmm. um, he says that she's out cheating, and she hears this when she goes to church over to her mother's house, who's paralyzed from the waist down, or mm -hmm. she has to run errands. Um, she hears from him that she's secretly talking to someone on the phone. However, she says we both have access to the internet to check the call logs, which would eliminate that suspicion, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the stuff that's coming from his side. Um, this is quite complex and a lot of details, um, but there are some fundamental things that you need to really assess and look at. And I'm going to let my husband start out with his assessment of what he's hearing. It's actually quite common, you know, some of the things that you're speaking about. I mean, especially if a woman is really trying to invest herself in a relationship and she feels as though her man is stepping away and really preparing himself to step out. Mm -hmm. um, in that type of situation, you know, one of the things that I often encourage women to do is really ask the man what it is that he's wanting from her. Now, a lot of you all might think that it's real simple. You know, it's nothing that's rocket science about that. But trust and believe, at this point in you all's relationship, your man doesn't like you. I mean, that's what it is. He doesn't right. like you. He doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be with you. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have the capacity to like you. You say he doesn't want to be with her. I mean, yeah. I mean, what I'm saying right now is that in the space that they're in, he doesn't want to be with her. Mm -hmm. He don't. Want, he doesn't want to be bothered by you. I mean, he feels as though like you know whatever it is that you're bringing to the relationship or bringing to him, you know, is really just the weight on his shoulders. So, you know, but again, what I'll say is that that's not to say that he does not have the capacity to like you again. Um, the question is, how do you make him like you? Now, again, one of the things that I would she encourage her to do... need to try to make do, him like her? I mean, one of the things that I would encourage her to do is to really get to what it is that he wants from her. The heart of the matter. Yeah, that's really so key. Mm -hmm. Because, again, if the man... For instance, if he's liking somebody else, if he's expressing interest in somebody else, it's something that he's getting from outside of the home that he's not getting inside the home. So, you know, if the whole money issue is a thing, and you're not working, he's feeling stressed out over the bills, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a good chance that... You know, when he comes or when he steps outside of the home, he might feel like there's some relief. He might feel like there's somebody to pat him on the back. He might feel like he's getting some type of encouragement that he's not getting inside the house. And it, and it actually boils down to more than just sex. You know, you can put on all the lingerie in the world that you want, but if he's not attracted to you, he's not going to try to get with you. Well, why? I mean, you think he's not, a, you mean emotionally or psychologically, yeah, not yeah, I mean, in terms again, of if, physical. Uh, yeah, if I don't like you, I don't want to be bothered by you. Uh -huh. So the key here is to, you know, ask him, what is it that he wants from you so that he can like you again? You know, and I saw in the letter, too, that you mentioned that, you know, you all might go for two weeks without talking. But, I mean, keep in mind, if you all engage in this combative type of relationship, I mean, it takes two to tango. So if he's not talking to you, what are you doing to him? Are you sitting in your corner, you know, waiting for him to pursue you? Or are you trying to find some creative ways to actually engage him? Ooh, Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing because I'm hearing my husband uh, talk about, you know, what can you do to get him to like you because he doesn't like you. And y'all know, sisters, I'm like, well, let me, let me think about this thing, mm -hmm. you know. Are we coming from a position I mean, if you want your of, relationship. do you want him to like you? But, but I understand what my husband is really saying when he says ask him what he needs. Um, because oftentimes we can get all mired down in the, in the details. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that what my husband is talking about is that there are some unmet needs clearly happening in this relationship. You have been able to articulate your unmet needs. You know, you talk about um, the fact that, you know, he's not pursuing you sexually, mm -hmm. that he is, um, you and know. having some issues financially. The, yeah, the financial issues, and that he has a problem with your spiritual walk, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how you're experiencing that. He's coming down on you about that. So you talk about your unmet needs. You're not, not feeling, I guess, um, validated and, mm -hmm. and, and supported in that way. But you also are able to list some of the needs that he says mm -hmm. that he has. I mean, really, you said he says that you're selfish. Well, mm -hmm. if he feels that you're selfish, the opposite of that is that he needs you to be able to lift him up a little bit more. Yeah, be selfless. To, 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 to cater to him, to give to him, and to do what my husband said, ask me what it is that I need, if his mm -hmm. perception is that you're selfish. And, and I want to say this really quickly. It's not so important a lot of times as to whether or not you're really being selfish or not, or you're being whatever the issue is or not. If your spouse perceives that, then you've got to figure out how to be able to communicate in a way that they can understand it and feel it, mm -hmm. the fact that you're not doing that. So I may not think I'm being selfish, and that's not my intent, but mm -hmm. if that's how my husband perceives my energy or whatever, then I've got to figure out a way to communicate in a language 
selflessness that he can understand. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that's really what we're talking about. He, he, you know, the whole cheating piece, um, the controlling piece, he says you're controlling. Mm -hmm. You know, so how is it that you can communicate in a language that he can understand and in a way that he can understand that you're not trying to be controlling, mm -hmm. that you need to be heard, but you don't need to micromanage him. Yeah. You no know, man that wants kind to be thing. controlled by his woman. Right. So, 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 so that's one thing. The other piece here that is important, and we're gonna wrap it up, is that while we're talking about his needs, uh, certainly you have some needs, mm -hmm. and so he has to be able to hear them. But I will say this: because you come to us with the issue, then you are taking a hundred percent responsibility for trying to figure out how to move forward. And so then, if you're going to do that really think about how your husband can best hear you. Maybe he needs a letter. Maybe you need to take him out and y'all need to sit down and have dinner and you need to talk to him from the heart. And once you've done that, you have done your part there. And then you have to wait for his response. And if this brother is still saying, I'm done, I'm over you, blah, blah, blah. I am not an advocate for anybody begging. For anybody saying, but please, but please, but please, baby, please. I am not. What I am an advocate for is for your ability to use your discernment as to what's going on with you, what's going on inside of him, and to continue to lean hard on the relationship you say you are building with the Most High to help you make the right decisions you need to make. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is that focus on yourself. Focus on how you can be flexible, on how you can speak up when you need to speak up, on how you can get your needs met in a way that also lifts him up. And when you've done that, not only for him, not only for yourself, but for the relationship that you all have, when you've given your best, then you know that no matter what happens, you've done what you need to do. I don't know. I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. I think that's what life and relationships are all about. It really is about how can I grow despite the stress? Mm -hmm. How can I move despite the drama? How can I be the bigger person despite my anger? And when I've done that, I know that I've come from the best place. I know that I've laid it all out there. And I've tried to have some compassion up in it. I've tried to do some things up in it. But yet, he ain't giving me the right response. Well, then you got to deal with that response. And you got to do what's best. Or maybe he will sit back look a little differently at you because he's noticed something that has changed in you and then you'll be able to see some things differently in him because truth be told I'm sure there are two sides to this story I'm sure there's validity in what you're saying and I am absolutely sure that there's validity in what he's saying if you all can both look to the unmet needs in the other person then you can both focus on building the relationship and not building walls between the two of you we hope that this has been of help to you Remember, you gotta stop playing and start pushing. Uh, 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 one, two, one, two, uh.